हेलो गाइस वेलकम टू माय चैनल टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट बेसलाइन मॉडल व्हाई यू नीड अ बेसलाइन मॉडल व्हाट इट ऑल कंटेन्स एंड हाउ कैन यू अचीव इट सो इन दिस पर्टिकुलर वीडियो आई विल बी एक्सप्लेनिंग यू ईच एंड एवरी कंपोनेंट ऑफ ए बेसलाइन मॉडल सो सो वेन यू स्टार्ट विद एनी डेटा साइंस प्रोजेक्ट यू स्टार्ट विद फर्स्ट थिंग इज लाइक योर प्रॉब्लम सो वाट इज द प्रॉब्लम यू आर सॉल्विंग so the problem statement and this is mostly coming from you to from the business team business team can be your product manager product owner maybe your product owner or your product manager or maybe higher ups or any anybody from the business team so this problem needs to needs to be solved and they ask you to look into this particular problem from a data science perspective so next step what you ask them you after understanding the problem you start looking at upon a data set so this data set is it's called eda you understand the uh, data you make sense of this data and then you start asking relevant questions why why there are, there are certain things in this particular data and whether you have some hypothesis is so after doing this data you went back to the you should go back to the business and ask them some questions those questions can be your hypothesis and you can also ask them okay what type of questions you expect this data data set should have so it's like both way it's not only one direction it's both direction once you have eda you understand your data now next steps goes to your cleaning your data and actually both both can be done into uh, into one uh, into one phase itself that's why i'm having a data set work here so you do the cleaning or you might just do, do a quick eda and then go back and tell you know there are a lot of missing values there is a lot of things and you don't clean anything right now and ask them whether this makes sense to them or not or we have a data quality once team confirms you clean that data and move forward so the third step what happens once you have a confirmation you are going to do a feature engineering feature engineering is a very important part if you are working on machine learning so feature or most of the project starts with machine learning so uh, you have to do feature engineering here in this in this case in the feature engineering like you what you can do you can look upon some options where for example do you want to drive some features drive features for example let's let's say you have a date of birth column but date of birth is stand alone is not very valuable information but but age can be so you have like two days date and you subtract this your date of birth and then you get a age column so this becomes your derived column now you can use derived columns you can have some imputation methods here as well like you could use different imputation and i usually do it that as part of my feature engineering not as the uh, data processing because imputation can make lot of difference if you have imputed it wrongly so you can do here and there are many methods for that in addition to this you can also uh, you know pro if those are the numerical uh, uh, numerical columns you can have some stats coming out and you can increase your features for example you can use max mean or do some aggregation on that once that's done you are ready to start your modeling part so here your modeling comes in so the first model whatever you will build so for example you were working on a classification problem and you started with logistic regression it's a very simple straightforward uh, algorithm and model and then like you put you have you started with the logistic regression so you have your x train you have your y train let's say and you using that you trained your logistic regression so after this once you have trained your model you are going to do the validation and during this validation let's say you identified that okay your accuracy or whatever let's say for this particular case we are tracking accuracy as a metric and that is coming somewhere let's say minus uh, let's say it's coming somewhere 0.57 okay or sometimes you can call it like it's a score so you if you convert it into the percentage it's like the 57% it's slightly better than the guess guesstimate and now you found out okay my first model without doing too much of too many of things it it produced some value to me and which is 57 and then this you can tag it as a baseline okay once you tag it to the baseline model it means whatever you do after this you are going to improve on top of it you could you could go back again now do a extensive feature engineering you this in this process i just did what i understood from my hypothesis because i know that there's that short short of a change so that's why i included uh, some people what they do they just jump from the step 2 to step 4 directly avoiding the feature engineering i don't prefer that because um, a baseline should also be should also not just be zero right so you need to put some efforts here so go to this in feature engineering do some derived 
features you do some imputation do some stats whatsoever is feasible for your project and then you select a model based on your problem statement and then see the accuracy if it is less than or whatever the matrix you are trying if it's less than like 0 0.5 for example it was less than this i mean this is this is not really good model uh, guess will be a better in this is what i'm saying it's in terms of the binary classification so so this like for example now uh, coming back to the baseline so 57 becomes my baseline model but i have to think now what are my next steps so whenever i think any next step next steps from here that has to be aligned with my baseline at least my baseline feature engineering and my decisions should be in incorporated so that i i at least i maintain my 57 percent that's how the baseline starts so now you have now what you have to do as part of your iteration one let's say you want you have iteration one and in this iteration one you now need to communicate this baseline result to your business stakeholder so these guys should be aware that you have arrived at least 57 percent as a first set and that's where they are going to track your performance of your model so baseline needs to be communicated with business stakeholder what it does in nutshell it will help you to also build confidence your business team this is how you achieve the uh, baseline model and why you need it because it built confidence it also gives you a lot of understanding in the data sets and also you put a benchmark on your performance matrices then uh, if i have to make my experiments low so let's say this is my uh, this is my baseline and baseline my baseline model has a performance of let's say 57 percent and then next iteration let's say the model 2 will if it goes to like 60 percent then i'm moving in the right direction and i have here like my explanation so decision explanation okay uh, in this decision explanation you you will be explaining like for example you changed what all you changed here that which led to like uh, 60 percent maybe you have changed a different model maybe you regularization techniques and improved it so that's that's and that is something you need to keep updating and this becomes part of your uh, experiment log i will be explaining the how to maintain experiment logs in another video but in, in nutshell this is like how you will keep tracking of your decisions and then let's say you you keep doing this continuously and uh, you have reached model 7 where you reached 87 percent 86 percent of the accuracy and you have a um, uh, you have acceptance from the business team okay because those are the guys who will be using it so business team you stop it over here and you move to the now model 7 is model 7 architecture is going to be used for the deployment that's what will happen in the real setup in any industry so architecture is used for your for model production put things into the model production but let's say that whatever you did so far it was just part of research phase so if you uh, if you understand baseline concept properly you will be able to make sense of my other communication as well so in terms of understanding business so business team okay then you have like your uh, performance tracking and you put a benchmark on the on your performance you also you also get an idea for your next steps which direction you need to move and you also what you you have to do you also have to start thinking about data pipeline design like you once you have that that baseline model up you can start thinking about data pipelines no it's not final because final will happen once you have this uh, once you have your model 7 architecture ready but model baseline model still can give you an understanding how you are going to design your data pipeline so okay so if you see this particular architecture you might be coming to this final conclusion okay so let's say here first my i have my data pipelines this is my data and let's call it data py where i do i collect my data then next is my feature engineering then next is my model creation and then next is my model validation let's say validation and you once that is done everything is okay you put your model into your model repository okay when the prediction comes this is part of your training this is your training let's say this is part of your training flow when the validation will come everything will be done till this point you have a source data your prediction uh, sorry 
for your prediction so for your prediction everything will be same like this only the route you go from here is like you start taking consuming models from model repo and you just predict the values i will be explaining you the more complex architectures in other videos but for this for this particular video sake for the baseline con closing the baseline you can think of like this one and you have the output of csv so the prediction line does not come prediction pipeline does not come into the picture when you are discussing the baseline so this is something let's say uh, this is something let's out of scope but this is in scope this total scenario is in scope and up to this for your baseline model and once you have baseline you keep improving iterating over on your model and that's where you reach to the seven once you have the seven you follow the same architecture or whatever the architecture is there and then you also enable your prediction pipeline this complete system this complete system needs to go to your production system but did you realize that how did we start from the baseline and keep improving it iterating over it over again and again and again and then finally we reached on the so that's all in this video if you want to know more about uh, baseline model creation and why do we do that and if you have any specific questions put that into the comment section i will try to answer your questions or queries there itself so till then uh, i close this video and see you in the next video thanks a lot